Hello and welcome back to another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the Mist Weaver from the Warhammer Quest Silver Tower box set. And as always I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. So here we have the Mist Weaver and as you can see I've already primed it using the Army Painters Uniform Grey Spray Primer. Now I've also kept the appendages uh, separate so I've got the arm there the leg and then the um, the other arm that's containing the staff as well. I've kept all these separate as it makes uh, painting into the recesses a lot more easy. You don't have to do that, it is entirely optional. Now, the first task in painting this miniature is to paint um, the robes and also any of the cloth along the top there. I mean, base coating all these areas with Stegadon Scale Green. Now the Mist Weaver has a gradient in the cloth and it goes from uh, blue down at the bottom here to the tips and then it gets purple as it gets further up the body. So we're going to be focusing mainly towards the bottom of the robes and just painting the stegon on scale green like so. And then we're gonna be painting roughly um, roughly about halfway up the robe. So most of the bottom will be the stegon on scale green. And then we're gonna start painting these uh, extra bits of cloth that you can see here. You might need a, a smaller brush to paint these areas as there are, uh, they are a little bit smaller than the rest of the areas. Now in addition to painting the bottom half of the robe and also the fabric on the body there, I've also painted the armor sections on the legs and also uh, the arms as well, they're all painted with Stegodon scale green. Now the next step is to paint the rest of the fabric, so this is the top half of the fabric on the robe and also uh, around the stomach areas as well. And we're painting these areas with a mixture of Lamia Medium and also uh, Nagarov Knight. Now for this step we want to apply a gradient going from the purple at the top of the section of the robes down to the blue. So I'm mixed in um, about one part Lamia Medium to one part Nagarov Knight here and I'm just going to be applying this over the top of the robe and then blend it down into the blue sections. I'm just going to be applying uh, several layers building up over a few different applications of this Nagarov Knight and Lamia Medium mix. And you can see here I'm just blending the two together making sure that I've got a nice mixture between the two. As you can see we've got the nice purple gradient going from the top of the cloth down to the blue at the bottom there. Now what we want to do for the next step is to darken uh, the cloth areas considerably including the armor sections as well such as uh, those on these additional uh, armor panels and we're washing over all of these areas with non oil. So for this step I've mixed in roughly two parts non oil to one part water and this is because um, I don't want it to be too strong and darken the cloth too much I just want it to pull in the recesses create some definition which you can see here and then when I actually start applying the highlights in the next steps they'll uh, stand out that much more. So with the non oil wash dried the next step is to highlight the cloth um, on the robes here, so this includes the edge, not the um, the fabric we've got going across the chest and the waist there, but we're also going to be highlighting the armor sections as well on the arms and the legs. We'll be highlighting all of these areas with Thunderhawk Blue. So for this step I'm just going to be uh, picking out the folds in the cloth here just by uh, using the Thunderhawk Blue just along this edge, like so, just gently dragging it along the ridge of the fold and also along the bottom here as well. I'll be rep repeating this process across the entirety of the cloth and also the armor sections as well. So now that the first highlight is completed we can continue with the highlights performing a second more finer highlight on the uh, the crests here um, kind of where uh, the top sections of these folds are on the very edges and very tips of the cloth and don't forget to also um, paint the edges of the armor sections as well. I'm painting all of these areas with Fenrisian Grey. So using a very thin brush we're just going to be very applying a very fine line on the tips here. And you want to imagine where the light's coming from. It's going to be coming in from above here, so any of the upper sections are going to be a little bit brighter than the others. We don't want a small light, we want these highlights to be subtle, we don't want them uh, to be overpowering. I'm just be applying these across the miniature, anywhere where we've got an upper edge like so. With the blue cloth and armor highlighted, the next step is to start work on the purple areas of the cloth, and for this we'll be highlighting first of all with Gene Stealer Purple. Now, in much the same way as we tackled the highlights on the blue cloth, we're going to be approaching this in the exact same way, just picking out these folds here with the Gene Stealer Purple, just applying very thin lines along the creases like so. So again, we're going to be highlighting the purple cloth, and this time we're going to be performing a secondary highlight, and this we'll be using the Kalia Light Look. So you'll be wanting to apply this highlight in the same way as you did the Fremrazine Grey on the blue areas there, just picking out the top sections of the fold, just applying a very small amount here just to lighten up the folds very subtly. We'll be doing this across the entirety of the miniature or wherever we've got these purple folds. With the robe completed, the next step is to start working on the cloth wrapped around the waist and also the chest there. And for this we'll be highlighting it with Sotek Green. 
Now Sotec Green works really well as a highlight as it just adds um, a slightly kind of turquoise colour to the miniature. It stands out enough from the, the blue that we've got down here on the robe without um, contrasting too much. And you see here I'm just picking out all of the, the edges using my uh, thin brush. Just making sure I pick out all the edges with Sotec Green. Now the very final step for painting the cloth across the chest and also the waist is to highlight the very edges using Blue Horror. Now because the Blue Horror is much lighter than Sotec Green, we only want to apply very small amounts of uh, the, this, so I'm just going to be focusing this on the corners of the cloth here. Very small amount, just on the very tips like so. Sorry, just let the camera focus there. And you just about to see just the small amounts that I've done on the very tips. I'll be doing this across the tips there. And then we'll actually come to uh, tackling the parts across the chest. I'm just going to be focusing on the very upper edges, just where you could imagine the light hitting and reflecting off like so. So now that we've completed all of the cloth areas, the next step is to paint the skin. And for this, we'll be base coating with Rakar Flesh. So to begin with, I'm just going to be uh, painting the base coat of this Rakar Flesh just along the back here. And don't forget to also paint the skin on the arms as well. I'm just making sure I don't overspill onto the areas that we've already painted either. Once the Rakar flesh is dry, the next step is to apply some definition into the recesses, and for this, we'll be using Reichland Flesh Shade. So I've mixed in a small amount of water into this wash, roughly uh, two parts Reichland Flesh Shade to one part water, and I'm going to be applying this over the skin. As you can see here, it's pulling into the recesses, giving us some good definition, whilst at the same time also creating a more lifelike skin colour. I'll just be applying this over anywhere where the skin, so on the back here, back of the head and also the arms as well. With the wash dried, the next step is to highlight the skin and for this we'll be using Flayed One Flesh. Now the reason for highlighting with Flayed One Flesh is because it's really pale, um, gives a really kind of pale complexion effect on the skin, as you can just see I'm picking out the shoulder blades here. And it's quite a nice miniature to actually highlight the skin areas, there's quite a lot of nice ridges that you can pick out with the highlighting which I'm just doing here. Now that the skin is completed, we can now move on to painting the hair, and for this we'll be starting off with a base coat of Mephiston Red. Because Mephiston Red is a base coat, you should have no problem applying it over here very quickly. As you can see here, I'm just getting it a nice even coverage, which gives us a really excellent starting point for painting the rest of the hair. When the Mephiston Red is dry, the next step is to wash over it with Karaberg Crimson. So this wash will help us pick out all of the individual details and strands in the hair. Now I'm going to be focusing it mainly towards the base here, where, the, where it drains the head. I want this to be slightly darker than the rest of it, so I've watered it down a little bit, and once it's dried I'll be applying a second coat just at the base there, and this will just create a uh, nice gradient of colour. Once the application of the Carabao Crimson is dried, the next step is to pick out all of these strands of the hair, and for this we'll be using Wild Rider Red. So for this step, I'm just going to be uh, picking out these strands of the hair with the Wild Rider Red, and this gives us some really nice definition in the hair. I'm going to be focusing mainly towards the end of the hair, towards the tips, as I am, rather than the bottom. And a tip for doing these kind of hair sections is if you hold the brush kind of almost parallel to the actual surface you're painting, but the, apply a small angle, a slight angle, and you actually just start picking up the raised edges as opposed to the uh, the depths. You can just see what I'm doing here. Continuing with the hair, the next step is to focus on the tips of the strands, and we'll be highlighting these with Fire Dragon Bright. In a similar fashion to the previous step, I'll be picking out the tips of the strands, like so. Just uh, focusing on the very ends here. So the next step in painting this miniature after we've completed the hair is to paint any straps. This includes the one at the back of the head there, and also the some on the arms, and we'll also be painting the um, the trousers, as you can see here, and also the, the main handle on the staff. I'm painting all of these areas with a bad and black. As a bad and black is a base paint, you should have no problem painting over the grey primer. You can just about see here, I'm just applying a thin coat, it's better to mix in just a, a small amount of water just to improve the flow, than it is to apply one thick coat. As you can see here, once this coat's dry, I'll probably be going over it again with another watered down coat of a bad and black. Once the abandoned black has been applied, the next step is to start highlighting the black areas. And this will be starting off with Eschen Grey. As Eschen Grey is quite a dark grey colour, it should provide a nice subtle highlight. I'm just going to be focusing it along the shin here. 
I'm also going to be picking out some of the uh, the ankle bone there as well. Just anywhere where you've got a significantly raised section. With the first highlight completed, the next highlight will be a, an extreme highlight, as we've done on previous steps, and for this we'll be using Dawnstone. So using a thin brush, I'm just going to be applying a very small amount to this here. You don't want to apply too much as it can um, give off the appearance of a very shiny material, which is what I'm not really going for, I want something quite matte looking. So I'm just going to have a small amount along the, the shin bone here, and down to the foot, and just around the foot as well. With the black areas completed, we can now start working on the smoke. So this is the smoke that, uh, that's billowing up towards the cape, and also there's little uh, fragments of it there. But there's also some on the staff there as well, just emanating from uh, the head. And we're painting all of these areas, first of all, with a base coat of Celestra Grey. Now, Celestra Grey is an excellent paint for painting these smoke areas, not only because it's also a base paint, which means it covers really easy, but also it's got like a slight bluish tinge to the colour which is perfect for the smoke effects that we're going for. And we're painting all of the smoke um, with the Celestial Grey base. Once we have achieved a really nice and even base coat of Celestial Grey, the next step is to wash over all of the smoke that we've painted, both on the, uh, the main body and also the staff, with a thin down mixture of Nuln Oil. Now I've watered down the Nuln Oil slightly, mixing roughly one part Nuln Oil to two parts water. Uh, this is because we don't want to be applied too thick. We want to keep the smoke looking quite bright but we just want to pull in the resource in the, the recesses sorry and just improve the definition of the smoke. The final step in painting the smoke is to apply a layer of ceramite white and lamium medium. So I've created a mix of roughly one part lamium medium to one part ceramite white. I'm going to be applying this over the raised sections of the smoke and the reason why I've thinned it down is I want to create more of a, a nice even transition than just a stark white um, edge to the raised sections. Now before we move on to the metallic areas, the next step is to paint the bone skull on the waist there, and first we'll be using Rakar Flesh. If you've watched any of my previous Silver Tower painting tutorials, you'll know that Rakar Flesh uh, it makes an excellent base for this kind of bleach bone look, and I'm just applying this to the skull. Just being careful not to overspill it onto the colours we've already painted. Once the Rakar Flesh is dried, the next step is to wash over the bone with Seraphim Sepia. Not only does this step allow us to darken the base colour of the Rakar Flesh, it also allows us to pick out some of the details in the skull as well, such as the, the ridge just on the skull there. You just about to see, I'm just making sure I get into all of these recesses here. The final step for painting the bone is to highlight it using Yushabti Bone. With the Yushabti Bone, we're just going to be picking out a few areas of detail on the skull, such as just around the eye socket, along the ridge, of the beak there and also the two sections of the top of the skull as well. Just applying a very small amount just where the light would be bouncing off the raised edges. With the non-metallic areas completed the next step is to start painting the silver areas. So this includes um, the mask there, we also have the blade and also any additional um, shards that are sticking out from the, the elbows like there. We also have the bottom blade on the staff as well. And we're painting all of these areas, first of all, with Lead Belcher. Now you should have no problem applying this paint as Lead Belcher is a base paint, so you should uh, cover really nicely against the grey. Now in addition to painting the uh, the silver areas on the mask as well, don't forget to also paint the, the little chains that are attaching the little gold pendants around the waist. The next step is to perform a highlight of Iron Breaker across all of the silver metal areas. First of all, we have the mask, so I'll just be focusing this along the top section here that's pointing to more towards the forehead of the mask. And then also just around the bottom, just where we've got the edge of the mask, leaving this in the kind of mid-section a little bit darker than the rest. And this just creates some nice contrast between the two colours. Now for highlighting the blades, I'll be approaching this slightly different. I'll be uh, painting the iron breaker along the actual blade edge itself. So for example, on this hand weapon like so, and then also along this blade that's poking out at the rear, and then finally along the edge of the blade that's on the elbows here. Now before we move on to the final highlight for the silver areas, we're going to start painting the gold areas. So this is pretty much anywhere that's currently grey. This includes these um, little circles that are attached to the rope there, around the waist, uh, the half moon there, the, the spike on the helmet, and these little tassels at the end. And also if I just bring in some of the armour sections, you can also see it's the uh, the the edging around the armour and also on the staff here we've got the staff head and also 
uh, this bottom bracket as well. We're painting all of these areas, first of all, with the Retributor Armour. So when painting with Retributor Armour or any metallic paint for black matter, I would highly recommend that you use a small brush and be very, very, very careful because you don't want to overspill onto non-metallic areas because it can be quite difficult to cover up again afterwards. Once the gold layer is dried, the next step is to apply a wash over all of the gold areas with Seraphim Sepia. The reason for doing this wash is that the Retributor Armour is a little bit too bright for what we want at the moment. So I'm going to use this to dull it down a little bit and also improve the detail by darkening the recesses and really picking that out there. You see, I'm just going over all the gold areas, just being careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. So once the Seraphim CPU wash is dry, you can see that the gold is much more darker now. And uh, the next step is to highlight the edges of both the gold and also the silver areas on the miniature using Runefang Steel. So for this step, we're just going to be taking our thin brush here and just going to be picking out all of the edges of the gold and also the silver areas. First of all, we just focus on this, this crescent moon here. You can see I'm just running the brush along the edge there, just picking it out to create this nice silver highlight along the top and just on the inside at the bottom here as well. Now when we actually come to paint the mask here, now you can see I've actually cheated a little bit. I've painted the mask silver instead of painting it grey as I think it kind of gives you the same effect but it's a lot easier to achieve a good look for. So I'm going to be focusing this highlight towards the top of the mask, essentially where you would imagine the light to be reflecting most prominently. And then also I'll be picking out this, this little lip at the bottom of the mask as well, just here. And we're applying these same techniques across the entirety of the miniature, picking out all of the silver and the gold areas as well. And here we have the completed miniature. As you can see, I've reattached all the individual pieces and attached the Mist Weaver to a base. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below and also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. You can also help me choose which miniature you would like to see me paint next by clicking on the small right eye in the top right corner of the video and voting on your favourite. Additionally, if you'd like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page by clicking on the icon on the screen now, or alternatively on the link in the description. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.